we have got eight kilos of worm, six pints of casters, six pints of white maggots, and a couple of pints of pinkies, all white. And that is because we're off to Holland. Yes, that's it. Any hazards or pets in your vehicle? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Day four of the Anglo-Dutch festival in Holland. It's been a testing week. I've never been here before. It's a completely different sort of format from what I've fished before. Um, and you know, like I say, this is day four. Most of the pegs are the same, so I haven't filmed every single day because they're all very, very similar. And so I just thought I'd film today for you just so you can get an idea of what the canal's like and what the fishing's like. Day one's really done me. I've ended up on eight points in the section. Um, frustrating day really. I've, only had, I've had 10 fish for 18 kilo, but there'd been some mega weights, three or four pegs to my right. 50 kilos, 40 kilos, and that's kind of done my festival as regards points. And since then, that was eighth in the section, day two. I ended up winning my section on peg 35, which is a stretch further down to the left. It's a low weight section. When I say low weight, 20 to 25 kilos has been winning that section, but I won the section with 24 kilos, just pipping Billy. Um, so that obviously got me back on track, but obviously with carrying eight points on day one's kind of done me points wise. So I was hoping to draw a big weight section yesterday. I've ended up drawing the same section, so I've drawn peg. 33 and to be honest it's the hardest day I've had since I got here I won my section in that section on Sunday in the open match as well so it's like you know it's a good confidence boost to, to win a section especially when you draw it again on on day three and I just don't like bites I don't know why I've drawn peg 32 a good peg on paper and historically a good area 31 32 are good but they don't really thrown up weights this week or last week for some reason but I thought I'd, I was probably last in the section. I've had eight fish all day. Uh, four of those have come in the last 30 minutes. 
So I've ended up with eight bream for 16 kilo. Um, and that's actually got me third in the section. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. The lads on 34 and 35 have really walked away with the section. So I expected to be virtually bottom with what I caught yesterday, but I ended up third. So that's four points in two days, which is quite encouraging. But like I say, with the eight points on day one, it just put me out of the festival. This festival's fish slightly different. Um, there's a weight competition and a points competition all within the same week. And we fish later, time, later times as well. <clears throat> we don't draw until half past 10 every morning. And we actually start at one o'clock and we get 30 minutes pre-baiting period. So we get 30 minutes from half past one and then the match starts at half past one and we fish until half past six. So very different times from back home in England. But obviously because of that, it just makes it a lot more laid back. You know, it's a lot more of a social festival, this one. Um, and everything except the draw bag has been fantastic. So it's day four. I'm going to film today for you just to get your feel for the, for the for the venue, for the type of fishing that we're doing here, what the venue looks like and all that sort of stuff. Just mix my ground bait, every morning has been the same routine. Mix my ground bait, head up to the draw for half past ten and then get down to the venue. We've been getting nearly two hours to set up anyway so I'll get off straight down there with Dad. I've got, obviously got Dad here with me so I'm going to finish off this ground bait and hopefully draw on a pile of bream for the last day just to have a really nice finish. Sixty-nine near the bridge, a chance of a wait. We'll draw pig sixty-nine. It's not an area I've uh, I've even seen before. To be fair, it's just past the bridge. Uh, I think I don't think it got fish yesterday. Or it, it didn't have much off it yesterday. So whether that's going to help or not, I don't know. But just going to get down to the peg now. Loads of time set up, and pretty much it'll be same sort of approach that I've had all week. predicted it is windy so this is probably going to affect the mic but on the last peg before the bridge winds coming across straight into us it is a bank holiday today and we've heard if it stays sunny like this there's a chance they might be swimming off that bridge jumping off and swimming obviously we hope that's not going to be the case but um, I guess we'll find out but yeah, wind straight in the face. Two hours to set up, so I'm going to take my time, get my kit out, and just get my rods clipped up and everything. The approach 
Um, I've just got two rods set up. I've got two identical rods set up, both with 4,000 reels, Aquas reels, 3.3 metre. It's the new slims that I'm using today. Um, I'm just going to fish two spots really. I'm not going to put a short line in. I just don't think the pole is going to be, or the pole line, is just not going to be worth putting in. I might, might be wrong, I don't know, but I really want to focus on that far bank. I've seen a few fish moving about. We know they're getting ready for spawning. So, not in front of me, but to my right. Can't quite see it over my shoulder. To my right, the pegs two to my right. There's some just marginal weed and I've seen some fish moving in there just while I was setting up so possibly that means they're starting to you know they're cleaning off or getting ready for spawning and all that so even though there's one or two fish over there they might not feed so line bites could be an issue or there just might not be that many fish there we don't know so I'm going to fish two lines it's 31 meters to that other bank so well I've got it clipped up at 31 meters that's just short of the far bank so I've got one set up there which is right up that shelf right in the edge of that wide marginal weed growth and then I've got one set further back at 28 meters so that's just down that slope it's just where it seems to level off a little bit there's not too much weed on the bottom there it feels feels all right and that's really it I'm going to focus on those two those two areas I'm not going to go down the middle I just think they're the lines where if we're going to get any sort of a weight that's where it's going to come from so I'm going to focus on those two spots the main feed is going to be chop worm maximum we're allowed on here is one kilo per match so I've cleaned off all the worms, cleaned off all the dirt and everything, there's exactly a kilo here. So what I've done is, before I actually chop them, I just took some out for the hook. And then this, the remaining lot is here, I'm just going to do that in one chop, ready for the session. I've been feeding nearly a kilo every day anyway, and I haven't really been on a massive amount of fish. So if I am on a, uh, lots of fish, then obviously I'll, I'll fully expect to use the full, you know, my full um, kilo limit. That's it, I'll show you the kit down there, it's very, very windy do my best to update you through the match and I'm going to be on weighing in duties as well Jan van Schendel's just been down again and asked me if I'll help them weigh in again my section runs that way the other side of the bridge so if I don't have plenty of fish to show you hopefully there's going to be some in other people's nets at the end of the match it's five minutes before pre-baiting we actually get off an hour pre-baiting so one o'clock till half past is just for feeding can't put a hook on feed as much or as little as you wish so all I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, I'm going to put five in long, which is right up against that grass, and then ten on that shorter line. But I'm going to put them in in stages, you know, one every couple of minutes, you know, every five minutes or whatever, just nice and steady throughout that half an hour period, and then just leave it for the last five minutes. And hopefully there's going to be some waiting for me as soon as I go on it. You're not going to be able to, be able to win me very well. It's incredibly windy, but um, kit-wise, I'm using the 36 box as you can see. Incredibly sturdy. Feeders I expect to be using are going to be these, I mean 30 gram horizon, it's going to be fine for cutting into that wind, I'll probably use them on both lines, yeah they're not very big but you can get a bit of feed in there and we might just be fishing for one at a time, it, we'll find out what it's like when we get fishing. EVA, bait box, very very simple selection of bait today, obviously the ground bait which you saw me mix this morning which is Karma, Special G Green, I've got a selection of hook baits, hook worms there, I've got a few more smaller worms in my bag as well which I'll get out, tub of water that obviously means you know it's like fishing with worms stuff, you wash your hands and I can also use that if I want to overwork my mix, it's all there nice and clean, very simple setup, very simple, I've got two on feeder on today because you're so high off the water you need a two on because your rod's going down so you're quite high off the water especially with an 11 foot rod so that's ideal for that very sturdy two four meter nets you need them because like i say you're up on stages and obviously some of these fish are averaging four pound you know and there's no weight limit as such just split your fish evenly so obviously a big net for big fish it's just obviously better for the fish as well so spare ground mate that's in case i use all that I can quickly just turn around and get that, some more in there, that's covered up in case it rains, like it says we may get some today. Rods, two identical setups, XS Slim, 3.3 metre, going to be using that. I've already got one ounce tips in which have been fine all week and that's coupled with a four, coupled with a 4,000, I'm right, right in front of the bus stop, an Aquas 4,000 reel with 010 Submerge on there. Uh, and that's what I've fished all week. Two rods, that's all it is. One's clipped up at 28 and one at 31. Simples. Like I said, I'm not going to put a massive amount of bait in, but I'm going to keep trickling it in throughout that half an hour period. Get my hook lens on. 
and get out there and we'll start across right up against that grass just to see what fish are there if there are any fish there and uh, hopefully get off to a good start so i'm gonna get my jumper on it's getting a bit chilly now and um, hopefully there's gonna be some bream out there waiting for us we'll just put five feet of falls across it's just a couple of minutes now so when we can actually fish we'll set off with super match hook size 14 Oh, 14 up length 50 centimeters just kick off from there if there are fish out there there's one or two crashing out there in them weeds we've got a feeling they're cleaning off they like it all the way down the length i've just heard as far down as that way you go there's more and more fish at the other end of this section so even if they're not feeding i'm sure we'll get indications on the tip just going to kick off with that and just see how the first few minutes goes and take, take it from there gram horizon feeder free running rig super super simple just gotta make sure I hit that clip nice and hard against this wind Five minutes in and I can't believe I haven't had a bite. I haven't even had a liner. Had the first 20 minutes or so casting across. And then I went on my shorter line, just down that shelf. Had a few casts there, never had a sign. I haven't even had a liner. I've now just gone further across. I've spotted that Wout, who's three pegs to my right, he's had two fish. I've noticed he's caught him right in the grass on the other bank, so I've just gone back across. There are still fish in them reeds, you can see them crashing and stuff. And, whether they're cleaning themselves or I don't know, but I'm not getting any liners from them either. I've just got to tuft the grass out there that I'm aiming for. I'm getting as tight to it as I possibly can. A bit tricky in this wind, but um, I think if I'm going to get one at this stage, it's over there. But I don't want to keep chasing shadows. So I'm going to have one more cast out there long under that other bank. And then I'm going to go on that shorter line just to, you know, spend a bit of time on that. I just don't want to be chasing shadows. even had a liner but still fish up that far bank I've just switched to a bomb and I've hooked one whether it's upright or not or whether I foul hooked it I don't know but it's a fish could be the way to go I don't know whether back enough from the feeder or just not feeding I don't know the mark well I've 
not had another sign chucking that bomb along that far bank, so there's been a grebe that's been over there getting um, weed and rushes and stuff for its nest for its building, and it's actually cleared out a really nice hole over there, so which I didn't have before. So what I'm going to do is it's the last day of the last day of the festival. I'm not in the chase for anything, to be fair. So I'm going to put some gear in on on that shorter line. Come back three meters to 25 meters down in the deeper water so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put about 10 feeder falls of baiting on it not a massive feeder just a plastic feeder just to make sure it empties out all on the deck because it's quite deep I'm going to put loads of chop worm there it's down that shelf and then I'm just going to give it 20 minutes to settle and then I'm going to go over it and just try and get one or two fish just to settle on that bait really to be nice to rack up a bit of a weight but it's just not happening I've, had, I've just got that one bream I'll just put a nice better bait down give it 20 minutes and then go over it go over it and just hope that a few fish are going to settle on it Jan's just been down, Jan van Schendel, he's just walked down all this stretch here. He says the most is nine fish. There's less than two hours left now and I haven't had a single bite since that bream that I got on the bomb. I just can't believe it, I'm not getting lion bites. It's just as though there's no fish there. There's still one or two moving in that grass opposite. But I just can't, I can't catch one over there. I'm not even getting liners for some reason over there and, and I've put all that gear in on the 25 meter line. And, and I don't know if they're just not in that deep water or what, I don't know. I just picked my long rod up and just chucked right under that other bank again. And it's only been in about a minute. And it's two quick twitches and then it dropped back down that slope. I've hooked a bream. Maybe I should have just stuck on this all day. I've just been told that well, three anglers down to my right could possibly be winning the match with 11. 11 bream so it is fishing hard but I probably should have stayed across on this I think I've just caught two pieces of worm on a size size 14 super match just like that and just ground bait in the feeder I've just cut feed out now the fish are already over there because we can hear them crashing about in the weed and stuff so just picking a spot direct in line with that post on the other bank Just gonna cross again right under that other bank. Two pieces of worm on just ground bait in the feeder. And it's only been in about a minute again and it's just dropped back. I've got another fish. Don't think it's one of the really big fish, but just getting a response has been the target really. There's only about 45 minutes left and I'm already kicking myself now, wishing I'd Wishing I'd stayed on this line for most of the day, if not all the day, but yeah, it's another bream.
that's it, done. Didn't get any more. Ended up with three fish. Two decent bream and one smaller one. Bit frustrating, but I just wish I'd stayed on that long line now. I really do. But, you know, you've got to, got to cover your options. And I didn't just want to chase shadows as it was, you know. Obviously, a lot of those fish over there haven't been feeding. But, yeah, I don't know what the best weight is down here. Probably well, it's got to be got to be best with about 11 fish last we heard. So that's it, done. We get kit packed away. I'm on waning duties as well for our section that's the other side of that bridge. So be interested to see what they've caught. Well, I've ended up with four and a half kilo. Like I said, one of the fish, it wasn't a proper one, but it's two decent bream and one smaller bream, but that's it. Um, Alan's won the section, he's done another fantastic job. He's, uh, he's had 18 kilo, 10 fish. Just so consistent, these lads. They've been here two weeks, and I think that really, really helps. I mean, they've been coming years anyway. But obviously, I mean, that week before this week, it, it just kind of gets you in tune with the place, you know, but I suppose that applies to every venue. So that's it, done. Been a cracking week. Really enjoyed it. Sun's out now. We're, thankfully, that rain didn't come what they uh, what they forecast, and we didn't get the swimmers that we were forecast as well. So, yeah, I think I've learnt a bit. I think well down to my right, he's ended up on 17 fish, 30 kilo. I think he's had. Don't actually know for definite because that was a that's actually a different section down there. So, I haven't seen the waveboard for that. But that's it. I'm going to head back to the house now, have some food. Looking forward to the presentation and having a chat with everybody. Tomorrow will be up, tomorrow's Friday, so we're going to obviously get out of the house tomorrow and we're going home tomorrow on the 7 o'clock ferry tomorrow night. Overnight ferry, just like when we came. And then we'll be back in England Saturday morning. So, uh, yeah, it's been a fantastic trip. Really enjoyed it. Dates permitting and everything, I'll definitely be back next year. It's been a fantastic trip.